When it comes to art, true art, it requires the death of the individual ego and a complete surrendering to the muse and its vision. The process an artist goes through is a continual process of dying, dying into the ordinariness of everyday life. Your ego sheds and dies a little more each time you realize that the process is coming through you and is never by you. You become more and more transformed into a vessel of the muse. This is what William Blank and Philip K. Dick had in common. That was the reason why I decided to do the Blade Runner analysis videos on this YouTube channel, which you can see in the card above the first episode. They were not merely, merely illustrators or writers of Pulp Fiction. They instead surrendered themselves to the muse and became its bard. Today as artists, I feel like this has been something that we've lost connection with. This is the true great tradition and value of art. The thing that we as artists or writers have to uphold in a world that tells us that there is no magic, mystery, or imagination in the world. Instead, we are just cogs in a giant bureaucracy of strip malls that we call the modern world. This has led the artist to adopt the language and thinking of marketers and business leaders. Even the culture of the modern artist communities you find online is a toxic cesspool of people's opinions and insecurities that they are ready to throw on you. If you find yourself in these schools or communities, be warned, this could be the death of your creativity. As soon as you begin to imbibe the opinions and biases of others, you are now poisoned with their ideas and have to unlearn them in order to progress. These ideas and this process is typically invisible to us. We adopt other people's thinking without hesitation. Because we are social animals, we become who we are around, and this is why so many people are stuck. They look to the left and to the right, and they live by the expectations of others and their insecurities. It's necessary then for the artist or writer who really wants to know what is possible for them to at least occasionally live like a monk, to throw away all the advice and opinions of the world and to reinvent the wheel, to start over from scratch. More than looking at other comic artists or illustrators in my profession, I feel in my soul a deeper connection to the traditional Japanese craftsmen who built swords and armor for samurai. When you watch these men at work, which I've included a link to a documentary in the cards that you can see now, you can sense through the video the level of equanimity these craftsmen have towards their work, and I find that to be very inspiring. Equanimity is another word we have lost the meaning of. What does it mean, and how is it relevant to artists? Let's look at the Hindu definition. In chapter 2, verse 48 in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, Perform your duty equipoised, abandoning all attachment to success or failure. Such equanimity is called yoga. We could also say that such equanimity is what we call art. Today, as artists, we are often more concerned with how we are perceived on our social media than our connection with the muse itself. We want the likes, the accolades, the fame, and of course the sales, and we want it yesterday. We are attached to our success and failure. This causes massive strife in the artist, and where there is strife, creativity cannot flourish. Part of this is understandable. As a modern artist trying to run a business, one has to wear many hats. The business hat, and the marketing hat are necessary, but the artist, in order to be successful, needs to understand when to put down one hat and pick up another, and to not get them confused. He or she has to know that the connection with the muse is the nexus of their life. Without that, everything they do will fall flat and fail. Technology has invaded our minds, integrated itself so much with our day-to-day -day that we don't see how far it has led us from ourselves, and most of us are so addicted to our phones and the noise of the world that we don't even care. We now have society in our pocket at all times. Society is in our ear constantly. 
so that even when you are not around other people, you are cursed with constantly trying to monitor and manage other people and their opinions. Did my work get enough likes? Why didn't such and such posts do better than the last? The language of the artist is their intuition. And the only way to listen to your intuition is to actually listen. There is no how. There's no three-step process that somebody can give you. Nobody to hold your hand. And truly, you don't want anybody to hold your hand anyway. Because the joy of the creativity is the adventure of it. What we have to do is we have to become aware of how it is that the constant noise of the world will always make you miserable and lead you further away from yourself. There is a voice in your head, or maybe your heart, that guides you. Most of us just choose to ignore it and drown it out with the noise of the world. We overcomplicate our lives to give ourselves excuses for not doing what the voice calls us to do. Those that seek meaningless pleasures in this world find it difficult to disentangle their mind from the world. Therefore, they do not have the ears of understanding to hear the voice. How long will you suffer and strive against life until you completely submit to this inner voice and let it guide you? How long will your heart ache from not being heard by the only person who can truly hear it? The irony is that when an artist truly surrenders to their intuition, to this internal voice, and gives up trying to make art that is relevant to the market or as a parody or competition to the next artist, his work takes on an unidentifiable quality. It becomes something that can't be quantified or imitated. Make no mistake, all our problems are from thinking we know better than this inner voice. When we understand this, the world seems to almost move out of your way and lends a helping hand. What seemed an obstacle becomes an opportunity. The right information will come to you at just the right time, or a chance encounter will bring you the break you're looking for. This life is an act of surrender. To understand this in your own experience is to live without strife or suffering.